Good morning. This is Dr. Deepak Natarajan, Director Cardiology, Supreme Hospital Delhi NCR. Today is the 25th of September 2022. This year, the American Heart Association has published its uh, guideline on the treatment of heart failure and uh, they strongly recommend that uh, four drugs, four heart failure drugs are used simultaneously. And these would be a beta blocker, an ACE inhibitor or an ANI, an SGLT2 inhibitor and a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. The recommendation is that in the event of a patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, that is chronic heart failure, the use of these four drugs uh, all at the same time would reduce mortality by as much as 74%, which is substantial. In fact, this is much more than substantial. A reduction in mortality of this magnitude has never been achieved before. So the trick is that one uses all these four medicines in a patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. In the guideline, there is also a brief mention of a new drug, which is called uh, Verisiguat. Verisiguat is a stimulator of a soluble enzyme called guanyl cyclase. Now, guanyl cyclase is important because this is reduced in patients with heart failure as also nitric oxide. The purpose of uh, nitric oxide and guanyl cyclase is that they produce cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP is very important to maintain vasodilatation, to maintain endothelial function, to prevent fibrosis in the heart. And all these uh, beneficial effects by cyclic GMP help the failing heart. So therefore, it is imperative that we build up cyclic GMP by stimulating this enzyme called guanyl cyclase. And this is achieved by this new drug called Verisiguat. The dosage is very simple. It is a single dose used orally. 2.5 milligrams is the dosage which we begin with and uh, the researchers recommend that we build this up to 10 milligrams per day. The unfortunate aspect is of course that in India this drug is not yet freely available. It is not available as a locally produced drug. The parent company which is Merck is supplying the drug in India and the 2.5 milligram dosage costs about 100 rupees per day. So the important thing here is to remember that uh, the standard therapy still is a combination of four drugs which have been used for many years and recent randomized trials have confirmed that these drugs are effective. Now on to Verisiguat. Verisiguat was used in a large trial called the Victoria trial which was published last year but the drug has come this year to India. This trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This included 5,050 patients of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with a rider that these had to be patients who had had a problem in the last six months. That is, either they were admitted in a hospital in the last six months or needed uh, an, an injection of Lasix or a Ditor. That is, uh, there was a requirement of a injection of a diuretic. So these patients were there. There were about 5,050 patients. They were followed for almost 11 months. They were randomized to two groups. One group received uh, Verisiguat and the other group received placebo. Of course, this was uh, above what drugs they were already uh, being given for heart failure. In fact, 90% uh, of these patients were on two guideline heart failure drugs and 60% uh, of these patients were on three guideline uh, heart failure drugs. The exact numbers were about 90% were on a beta blocker, 70% were on an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker, 70% were on a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, and 15% were, uh, were on ARNI, and about 15% were on a biventricular pacemaker, and around 28% were on an ICD. So therefore, these were fairly well-managed patients, but however, still, they managed to worsen and they needed admission in a hospital in the previous six months. So we have a cohort of patients with heart failure, with reduced ejection fraction, less than 40%. In fact, the median uh, ejection fraction was 29%. The range was from 4% to 44%.
and 76% uh, were males, 24% were females. And uh, these were followed for almost 11 months. What was found was that the, the uh, composite endpoint of cardiovascular mortality or heart failure hospitalization was reduced relatively by a significant 10%. The absolute figures were a reduction from 38.5 to 35.5. That is a 3% absolute reduction in the, uh, the uh, composite endpoint. Apart from this, there was a relative 10% reduction in heart failure hospitals admissions and a 10% reduction in the all-cause mortality or admission for heart failure. Now, the reduction in mortality was just about 7%. So the benefits of this drug were modest, but one must bear in mind that these were patients who were having severe heart failure and who had a median ejection fraction of just about 29% and uh, were recently admitted in a hospital, so therefore they were very sick. Apart from this, when you compare this study, when you compare the Victoria study with a very sick what, with the earlier randomized studies of Paradigm using an ANI, and uh, the DAPA heart failure trial, we find that in, in Paradigm, the patients in class 3 and class 4 were around 25%, whereas in the DAPA heart failure trial, patients in class 3 or class 4 were about 30%, whereas in Victoria, this number went up to 41%. So clearly, the patients in Victoria were far sicker, were more sicker than the patients in the earlier Paradigm or the uh, DAPA heart failure trial. Apart from this, the uh, NT pro BNP level was very high in the Victoria heart failure trial as opposed to the uh, DAPA heart failure and uh, the Paradigm heart trial. Because in a DAPA heart failure trial, the, uh, the average uh, NT pro BNP was about 1600 picograms. In, in Paradigm, this was about 1400 picograms per mil, whereas in Victoria, the NT pro BNP level was on an average 2,800, 2,800 picograms per mil. So clearly, the patients were very sick as compared, were sicker definitely as compared to the patients enrolled in the paradigm using ARNI and in the DAPA heart failure trial using uh, DAPA gliflozin. Apart from this, we have a sub analysis which was uh, published, uh, presented this year in the ACC wherein they divided these patients in the Victoria trial by their ejection fraction. So there were three tertiles and the, the, the worst were below 24% ejection fraction. The mid-range ejection fraction was from 25 to 33% and the, uh, the best ejection fraction group was more than 35%, more than 33%, sorry. And uh, what was found was that the biomarkers, that is NT-PRO, BNP, interleukin-6, and C-reactive protein levels were highest in the lowest tertile group, that is less than 24% uh, ejection fraction. Also, the efficacy of the drug in uh, the effectiveness of the drug in reducing cardiovascular mortality or uh, heart failure admissions was to the tune of 18% in the lowest ejection fraction group, that is less than 24%. Uh, and this was only 5% or 3% in when ejection fraction patients of uh, more than 25% were identified. So the take home message is very clear. If one has a patient of chronic heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction, especially if the ejection fraction is very low, less than 25%, and these people have worsened recently in the last six months, that is they have required admission in a hospital or needed uh, an intravenous diuretic, it would be worthwhile adding this new drug called Avericiguat. The dosage is simple. You begin with a dose of 2.5 milligrams. Try to build this up to 10 milligrams per day. And this is used only once a day. The side effects are not very many. They were not much greater than placebo, but the numbers having hypertension, symptomatic hypertension, and uh, syncope or anemia were slightly raised in the treated group. But there was absolutely no difference in the kidney profile or in electrolytes. So therefore, the drug can be reasonably safe if employed carefully in these patients. The 
the take home message then is that if one has a patient of heart failure and this is recommended also by the American Heart Association which has published its guideline this year that is in a patient with chronic heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction who has worsened in the last three or six months there may be a role for this new drug called Vericiguat which is used once a day at a dose of 2.5 milligrams to begin with and which is built up to 10 milligrams per day. Also, it is, uh, I think it would be worthwhile to mention that this medicine at a dose of 2.5 milligrams costs today at about uh, 100 rupees uh, in India. There is uh, no drug which is being, this drug is not being, is, is not being manufactured by a local drug company so far. The drug which is manufacturing this is the parent drug, parent drug company, which is Merck. And it was interesting to uh, mention that it would be worthwhile mentioning that uh, Merck also produced ivermectin, which I believe was working pretty well in uh, patients with COVID-19. So thank you very much. I hope you've liked this video. In case you've liked this video, kindly subscribe and uh, press that uh, bell icon. Thank you very much once again.